Thank you for staying with us for this next hour. White House Press Secretary Robert Gibbs announced today that this Wednesday, the day after tomorrow, President Obama will make a detailed proposal on how exactly to finish getting health reform done right now. The president believes uh, strongly that we were, that he was elected to make progress on issues uh, that had confounded and vexed uh, Congress and the political system for years, health care being one of the bigger ones. I do believe the president believes that uh, uh, an up or down vote is, uh, is necessary. When they say up or down vote, they mean that Republicans should stop filibustering health reform, let it pass or fail with an up or down majority vote. And everybody knows that's not going to happen. So Democrats have a plan to get around that problem by getting the last remaining tweaks to the bill passed using reconciliation rules. That means those tweaks would pass with a simple majority in the Senate and a bill would get to the president's desk. This is it. It's going to happen. It took them a year, but they have finally come around to recognizing that there are no Republican votes for health reform, so they're going to pass health reform without Republicans. It's done. It's going to happen. Ambiguity over. Everybody freak out! And it would be a political kamikaze mission for the Democratic Party if they jam this through after the American people have been saying... Look, we're trying to tell you in every way we know how, in elections, in surveys, in town hall meetings, we don't want this bill. It would really be the end of the United States Senate as a protector of minority rights. Senator Lamar Alexander talking about reconciliation as if it's the end of the world. Warning of the apocalypse that will be brought down upon the Senate if it is used now. It must be hard to argue with a straight face if you yourself have voted to use reconciliation over and over and over again, like Lamar Alexander has. Like in 2003, when Lamar Alexander voted for the Bush tax cuts under reconciliation, or the two times that Lamar Alexander voted for reconciliation bills in 2005, or the time that Lamar Alexander did so in 2007. The very same reconciliation rules which he now speaks so apocalyptically of. The Google one, Lamar Alexander zero. Joining Lamar Alexander and embarrassing himself on live television on this subject is Republican Senator and Sunday show more than regular John McCain. Senator McCain's big awkward lie down on the tracks to stop health reform came when he proposed changing Senate rules so reconciliation couldn't be used for anything involving entitlements. So, for example, nothing that affected Medicare could pass as part of health reform. Entitlements should not be part of a reconciliation process, i.e. 51 votes. It's too important. You know, today's John McCain should really talk to the guy who used to call himself John McCain about that, because that other John McCain consistently votes to change entitlements through reconciliation votes. In 2005, the Senate used reconciliation to pass the Deficit Reduction Act by the slimmest of margins. The vice president at the time, Dick Cheney, was needed as the tie-breaking 51st, 51st vote. That bill, among other things, slashed spending for the entitlement known as Medicaid. Among those voting yes to change this entitlement, Republican Senator John McCain. In 1989, the Senate used reconciliation to pass the Omnibus Budget Reconciliation Act of 1989. That legislation, among other things, overhauled the doctor payment system for the entitlement known as Medicare. Among those voting yes to change this entitlement, Republican Senator John McCain. But now Senator John McCain says entitlements should not be part of a reconciliation process. It's too important, he says. Senator McCain now proposing to outlaw something that he has done repeatedly. John McCain once again taking a strong stance against his own beliefs. Health reform is going to happen. Health reform is going to happen. It has passed the House. It has passed the Senate. They are going to bridge the gap between the two bills using reconciliation. Republicans can do nothing about it. They lost this one. But in the meantime, this is what they're flailing about it looks like. They are so desperate, for example, to, to, to stop Democrats from, from using reconciliation to pass health reform that they've taken to calling it the nuclear option, a scary-sounding thing that has absolutely nothing to do with reconciliation. In fact, the real nuclear option was a Republican threat back in 2005 to take away the filibuster altogether. But since it sounds scary, 
why not call reconciliation the nuclear option and just hope the media repeats that weird ham-handed lie for you? Isn't it interesting, what used to be called a nuclear option is now kind of a warm and fuzzy phrase called reconciliation. That's right. A completely different image <laughs> than the together. explosion of uh, <laughs> the nuclear option. No, no, no. Completely not what the nuclear option is. Why would that Fox News anchor mistakenly believe that bogus Republican talking point? Perhaps because he's been watching a lot of Fox News lately. Uh, Republican lawmakers fear that Democrats will use the controversial nuclear option or reconciliation to pass health care with just 51 votes. Reconciliation or the nuclear option requires only 51 votes to pass a bill on the Senate side. The GOP slamming the majority for threatening to use the nuclear option, the Senate procedure called reconciliation. Some Democrats want to use reconciliation known as the nuclear option to push through a health care bill with 51 votes. So this may be the course, reconciliation the nuclear option we shall see you know they say that only they, that they only push an agenda they only sort of have opinions in their prime time hours just those guys at night it's amazing the nuclear option is a totally different thing than reconciliation you guys could totally look it up it is on the internets and everything i checked today we have now entered into conservative desperation mode health reform is going to happen we know how it's going to happen it's only a matter of exactly when Meanwhile, it's up to all of us to enjoy the pageant of frenetic partisan desperation. Joining us now is the chairman of the Democratic National Committee, Tim Kaine. He's also the former governor of Virginia. Mr. Chairman, thanks very much for joining us tonight. Hey, very good to be with you, Rachel. And in Virginia, we still believe in majority rule, and I think most Americans kind of understand that. Well, we learned today um, that President Obama is going to announce his way forward on health reform the day after tomorrow on Wednesday. I know that you are very plugged into this process. What can you tell yep. us about the strategy moving forward? Well, I want to let the president make the announcement, but, but you're right. All the options are being considered, and, and we are chuckling, Rachel, just as you are, at the Republicans fighting so hard against the notion of majority rule in the Senate. Um, the reconciliation rule is every bit as much a rule of the Senate as the filibuster rule is. They love the filibuster, but they don't want to allow the American public to have an up or down majority rule vote about whether to reform insurance abuses. Uh, and I think you'll hear the president lay out a strategy where we've debated this, We've taken Republican ideas into account in the bill that's passed the Senate. Now is the time to act, and the American public wants to see that Washington can act. Republicans are, are starting to, to shift now to say that after health reform passes, uh, if they're not able to stop it, they will start immediately to campaign to repeal health reform. Uh, any take on that? Um, I hope they do, Rachel. I want them to campaign in favor of insurance company abuses that kick people off policies when they get sick. I want them to campaign and say they want to now reimpose more prescription drug costs on seniors. I want them to campaign and say it's wrong that parents are now able to keep their kids on their policies until they're 27. They need to kick them all off the policies now. Uh, they are fighting very hard against this because they're petrified that it's going to pass. They know it's going to do good things for Americans. They know that their record of obstruction trying to block health reform is going to go very hard for them come November. Your point at the top of the hour about reconciliation and how it's been used, it's been used over and over again. It's that This majority rule principle is a rule of the Senate that has been used often by Republicans. It's been used repeatedly to reform the health care system. It's been used by Republicans to pass bills with much greater fiscal impact, the Bush tax cuts, than this health care plan. Uh, they love to use it, except when they... they when they see us wanting to use it. Um, but again, majority rule is what Americans understand. Uh, this bill has now passed both houses by a significant majority in the Senate. Time to fix it and make it happen. The reason that reconciliation is on the table right now, that these, these fixes between the two bills may pass by that process, is because Republicans have pledged to filibuster not only this, but everything. The Senate is essentially a 100 percent filibustered body at this point. And it's possible right. to work around that when you can, using reconciliation. Reconciliation is also a very awkward tool for doing all of the business of the United States Senate, even though I believe it would work rather easily for what they're trying to do with health reform. What about the overall problem right. of how how many filibusters there are. 
Well, it is the case, Rachel, as you point out, that the filibuster rule is in place for a certain, you know, kind of issue, and the Republicans have just run roughshod with it. They've used it to filibuster repeatedly non-controversial matters, and you know what they're trying to do when, if they can't succeed on the filibuster, then they turn around and vote yes on the bill. They're trying to block the American public from being able to get up or down votes on critical matters. And when the up or down votes are called, then they suddenly put themselves in the yes column for things like the jobs bill that they passed last week. Um, what, are you, what are we going to do to keep them from being able to carry this strategy out? I've heard the Senate talk about a couple of strategies. One of the simple ones is, if you want to filibuster, let's really make you filibuster. Let's go back to the Mr. Smith goes to Washington days, where if you want to use that tool, you got to stand on your feet and you got to look in the camera now and argue why it's good to let insurance companies continue to kick people off policies.